Hi, I'm here today with a Canada Reads review for Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee, and this book will be defended by Scott Hellman. Uh, so just a note, I did read and review this book back in October, um, but I'm going to re-review it here um, in light of Canada Reads. Um, so I'll link my original review down below, but I should be hitting on the same topics in this video anyways. So. This is the memoir of Jessica J. Lee's time in Taiwan, but it's also about so much more than that. Um, so she goes there in search of her family's history, and along with her we learn about the history of the island, um, the Chinese language, environmental sciences, um, and all these interweave to create this really engaging read. So even this book takes place in Taiwan, this book is such a Canadian book. Lee is the child of a Taiwanese mother and a Welsh father who struggles with her identity as a Canadian. Um, I think that is part of being Canadian. As a nation of immigrants, our population can very rarely trace their family origins back to just one location. So it was very interesting to see Lee explore part of her family identity. She has said in interviews that she had to write this book um, to work through her own identity as a mixed race person and to discover her place in the diaspora of Chinese people. This is not just about family history though, um, but also about Lee herself, and she demonstrates that through her passion for the environment, nature writing, and hiking. She takes advantage of being in Taiwan to explore the environment and writes about that, but it's not entirely disconnected from the theme of her family history. She connects her hiking and passion for environment to the history of Taiwan. She talks about how colonizers ignored the knowledge of the native population in regards to not only the flora and fauna, um, but also in regards to earthquakes and natural disasters. Um, and she also intertwines these stories with the story of her grandparents. She uses nature writing, political history, and her present experiences to write about her family history because these things are not separate things. These larger topics are influenced by the smaller actions. Her grandfather fought in World War II. Her grandmother witnessed the Nanking Massacre. It would have been remissively not to include these topics in her book. Her writing also reflects the letter of her grandfather that inspired this memoir. Her grandfather was writing about his life as he was developing Alzheimer's, and it was fragmented, non-linear, and, and thoughts wouldn't be complete, and he'd move on to the other topics in the middle of a sentence, um, and Lee reflects that in her own writing. A surprising choice of it's a surprising choice for a memoir to be non-linear, um, but I found that more engaging to have um, her family's history kind of grouped by topic rather than in a chronological order. And this also reflects genealogy as well. I mean, if anyone who has ventured into tracing their family history knows, um, we don't get the story straightforwardly. We get bits and pieces here and there and have to maybe go back and do some research. You know, I know in my own experience that this happens. I discovered a document of my grandfather's that gave me his birth location and along with family stories I already knew, I was able to go back and research that location and put pieces together. Um, you know, I started with knowing him in the present and then going backwards from there. My favorite thing about this memoir and what made it one of my favorite books from last year is that Lee's passion is palpable. <laughs> Her attention to detail and minutia, especially when it comes to specific plants, is so fun to witness and read about. You know, I love when people get to unabashedly, you know, geek out about their passions and I feel like Lee used this opportunity to not only showcase her family, but also herself and her passions. As someone who was only aware of Taiwan because the bottom of plastic toys I had as a kid were stamped with Made in Taiwan, this book was actually a great introduction um, to the island and its history for me. I didn't feel inundated with history as it was not just history as I've stated before and because there was something solid and present to connect it to as well, specifically Lee and her family. The history also connects with Canada's history. Both countries were colonized, their indigenous population suffered due to colonization, and their environment has also been affected by that colonization. And we need to realize those things, that colonization all over the world is a horrible thing, and we are still feeling the effects of that today, even though it may seem like it's just in the past. This book is also about finding um, a sense of belonging and a place to call home. Lee struggles with being biracial, the child of immigrants, someone who's moved around a lot. Um, I'm going to read actually this quote from an interview that captures this beautifully. It was one of those things for me that until recently felt unresolved, and in writing this book I was able to say, 
I have a multiplicity of identities, a multiplicity of homes. And actually that's sort of my conclusion. It's not about narrowing down one home and making myself feel rooted to a single place, but rather really giving myself permission to be connected to multiple places and multiple homes. What a lot of immigrant kids might be able to resonate with that. A lot of mixed race people may be able to resonate with that. Not being any less because we are stretched over many places because that's our magic. And I think that's a really important message. So how well does this book fit the theme of Canada Reads this year? And that theme is one book that transports you. So this book um, literally transports you to another place. We go to Taiwan, an island I admittedly knew very little about. Um, you know, we learned so much about another culture and place that many Canadians may not be aware of. The way Lee um, interweaves nature writing with the history of colonization, is this something that can transport us back to Canada? You know, sometimes it's only by traveling somewhere new that we can come face to face with our own problems back home. Canada has its own troubles with the environment, becoming more and more prevalent in the present, um, and these are tied back to colonization. Lee also does a lot of physically transporting um, throughout the story. We often find her hiking or riding her bike through the city. Um, and we are transported through time as well um, as we get the story of her grandparents and their experiences, especially during World War II. And this book, as mentioned before, is about finding home. And sometimes we have to be transported to other places in order to find that. So how do I think this book will fare in the competition? Um, I think this book has a, a fairly good chance of winning. Um, it did win the Weston Prize back in October, um, and memoirs have fared well on the competition before. Um, I think this will depend a lot on how Scott Hellman argues for the book and its themes, but I see it either being first or second place in my opinion. Um, so have you read Two Trees Make a Forest? And what do you think of it? And where do you think it will place in this year's Canada Reads? Thank you for watching.